Okay, I've been tasked to come up with a training program for our next 15 locations who are converting the Passport. Since you've been working with Passport, I need your help to figure out just what to tell the managers and cashiers. Where do you begin? There are a lot of things to learn and lots of benefits to stress. I'd start with the cashier workstation and how they use the touch screens to do sales operations. There are a lot of things we could train them that I had to learn from experience. Okay, let's focus on the touch screen. Where do we start? Well, the first fact is that the cashier screen is built for a touch screen. Big buttons with a lot of ways to do daily tasks. The cashiers don't have to travel many places on the screen. It is pretty self-sufficient, simple and easy to use. They need to hear that fact before they do anything. Well, let's talk about the different fields on the screen. In the upper left corner, you see a display is called the transaction queue, but to cashiers, it's a receipt preview. This shows what items have been rung up for sale, the amounts, etc. There are scrolling tabs here as well that will allow you to see details of a lengthy receipt. The view can be minimized, which is the usual view, or maximized, which provides more detail. Good, good. Keep going. I'm taking notes. In the top center of the screen is the function area. Here's where you'll do most of the touching. If you have the speed key display, there may be up to 16 speed keys on display at any one time. If your store uses more than 16 speed keys, you'll also have a back or a next key that will allow you to toggle to see the other keys offered. One thing I learned quickly was if a speed key is green, it will ring up a sale when touched. If it is blue, it will take you to another level of detail where you will find either a blue or green key. Eventually, the path will guide you to a specific item on a green key, which will ring up the sale. Good point. Remember on the right side, still in the function area, is the numeric keypad, which you may use to enter a price, a UPC, or perform any of several actions. By the way, you may choose to have this keypad displayed either to look like a calculator or to look like a phone keypad. I'll also note that the numeric keypad can be configured in calculator or telephone mode based on cashier preference. Now let's look at the bottom third of the screen. There's a yellow bar used for messages announcing the status or prompting you with the next action. On the far left of this bar is a date and time. On the right is a help button. I use that all the time. Please stress the use of the help button. The help feature will allow you to go to a menu that in turn goes to step-by-step -step instructions. And if you can't get what you need in the help feature, you can of course call Gilbarco support number as well at 800-800-7498. Now I found that it always helps to be prepared with as much specific information as possible. When we get down to the dispenser area at the very bottom, please stress the lesson I recently learned. See the off stop button? It is important to understand that in a fuel spilling emergency, you should follow your store's emergency procedures. This button stops electronic fuel control. It does not cut the power to the fuel locations. You might work at the station for years and never have to use this button, but if you want to stop the authorization for all pumps, this is what you would need to use. Just to the right, there is a field with a display of pumps. It is here you can see which pumps have been authorized which are actively pumping, you can also assign a prepay amount. On the far right, the authorization button allows you to control the startup of a pump. I'll also make sure to emphasize all the key areas of the fuel control area. Let's go back to the general function keys. Let's start with signing on. When you need to sign on, you won't need to use the keyboard. In fact, the keyboard can be stowed away for days at a time and never be needed. You can sign on using the touch screen. When stowing the keyboard away in the mouse, be sure not to leave anything on top of them because that may involve like unwanted input on the computer. To sign in, you will enter both a username, which is unique to the user, and a password chosen by the user so that he or she alone knows what the password is. The privacy of this password protects everyone in the system. New payment card industry standards, which may be in place at your store, may require a seven-digit or more password. Again, this is a security measure that protects everybody. You'll get an option to start a new till. In most cases, this will be required to begin the work day. The cashier will manually enter any starting amount in his till. Okay, the cashier is ready to go to work. What now? The cashier lives in the world of the sales screen. They need to know what each of these function keys can do for them. 
I'd start with ringing up the cell and go from there. Uh, telecashiers that speed keys allow a cashier to ring up selected items at a fastest speed and minimum disruption. They usually represent items that either don't scan easily, are messy items to scan, or top sellers at the store. Remember the cashier has multiple ways to ring up various quantities. One key function is the quantity button located in the function buttons area. It allows you to increase the number of any item being rung up for the sale. This can be done by pressing the plus or minus button on the keypad or selecting the number sold and using the at sign prior to selecting the product. And what about the open department keys that you can see when you toggle over to the department key menu? This is another way to ring up a sale. You can either enter the department or the price first. And remember, after a sale, you will need to select the tender button to indicate the method of payment. I set these up in my workstation, and I remember in addition to cash, credit, debit, I had coupon and food stamps. The tender button will show you what options you have for payment. I'll make a note to remind them that they can use multiple tenders in a sale, but remind them that credit or debit usually needs to be last on the list. You know, we have a lot of function keys available to the cashier. Some are only available during the transaction, while others are allowed only while the cashier is not involved with a customer. Any advice on how to tackle these functions? Well, I would start when the system is idle and go from there. Although all are important and fairly self-explanatory, there are a few that need some additional emphasis. I would start with the calibrate button. Great point. The cashiers feel like they're playing a video game with this function. But it is good to emphasize the need to keep the touch screen calibrated to avoid errors and aggravation. From calibration, I would discuss functions such as price check, where the cashier has the ability to check the price of an item without selling it. This is available even when the system is not signed on. Great feature, Kibarco. I would also mention the lock screen and sign off buttons. Make sure to show the cashiers that some of these features are located on the second and third levels of the function screens by pressing the more buttons. Will do. I'll also note the difference between locking the screen and signing off. Locking secures the cashier's till while they step away for a few minutes. Signing off allows another valid passport user to log on to your current till period. One area I think needs special discussion is the use of the no sale key. I love the drop-down reason codes that require a cashier to enter a reason they are asking for free access to the cash drawer. Please tell the cashier that the manager can track how many times they are performing this function and they can compare it to other cashiers. Two other big ones are the paid in and paid out buttons. We have programmed several different options for each of these and it is a very straightforward approach to handle such things as lottery payouts, vendor payouts, or when someone is giving money to the cashier, such as one of our store's local account customers. Got it on my list. I'll make sure to program some vendors to let them experience the real thing in class. Safe drops are a big part of our daily routine. You know, we have company policy about when we drop money to the safe. It is good to show them several ways this can be done through either using the safe drop button or selecting the flashing safe drop indicator on the yellow status bar. It is also good to note to the cashiers that the system even counts zero dollar safe drops for people who use this function to count the money in the till. Wow, I didn't even know that one. I learned something new today as well. You may want to show them the refund button and how the receipt area changes color when the cashier is in this mode of operation. We don't refund much at our store, but it's a good idea for them to know that they are in this mode by mistake. It freaked me out one day when I kept seeing negative prices and then discovered I was in the refund mode. How about in-transaction functions? Yeah, the price override button is good to emphasize. And not that they use it often, but really good for them to know that the manager can tell whenever this happens, who changes the item's price and what it was changed to. Great function to use to fix a bad item in the price book. Suspending transactions is a big one for me. It is important to note that we are not limited to one suspended transaction and it can be resumed to any open register. Another great feature. You need to spend a good bit of time on the void item and void transaction. You need to show them how the void item is not the old-fashioned error correct button. You can do it on any item in the transaction. However, please note that it will be noted on each cashier's till report the number of item voids and the monetary amount associated with it. Above the void item, tell them that the void transaction is similar to a no sale. 
You may need to select a reason for cancelling the entire sale. A special receipt will be printed that may be required to be included in your day's paperwork. That about covers it. Anything else? Please take a moment to show them how the discount function works with the system. We have several types of discounts configured with our Passport solution and it would be wise to show them how these function in the store. Item discounts are always selected after the item is rung up in the system. Some discounts are partial and some could make an item free for certain situations. Great point. I'm glad you added that one to the list. Okay, what about the day close process? Well, you need to walk them through their tail close process. They will probably safe drop most of their money prior to closing their tail. They will select the tail close button and then confirm their identity and their intent to close and balance their tail. Good, good. I know there are many ways to go with counting down their till. For our stores, we always leave a certain amount of money for the next cashier. In our case, we always assume the next cashier will start with this amount of money. Therefore, our till close process is very simple. I know others want their cashiers to count their drawer down all the way to zero, but both solutions work. All I know is that Passport tracks the money. If you tell it, it'll track it. I'll go through this process several times in class. Thanks for the advice. What about store close at midnight? Well, once they close their till, they need to go to the tools menu and enter their user ID and password. Once approved, they select the store close button and wait. In about 30 seconds, they will see their end of day receipt print. Time to reopen a new till. Please emphasize that they do not need to wait for all the reports to print. Keep it simple. Get your ticket, open your till, just that quick. Thanks so much for your help. I will use this input to help me in my next session. I know this covers most of the functions, but there are others we did not discuss. Well, I know, for instance, I have car wash at my store, and we did not talk about some of those functions. However, I can cover these special topics with my own cashiers. I think you should just make sure to show them the online help and how it can tell them all about these functions. Will do. Thanks again for your help. I'll make sure that we cover all of this with your cashiers and that they are ready to use Passport to best advantage.